hi guys i'm back again today with another video and today we're checking out two in one so we're checking out what german prisons do differently and also six things you can do in germany but not in somewhere not in the usa okay so before we start don't forget to subscribe click the bell button and let's get it we'll start with what german prisons do differently American prisons are toxic places. Ooh. When you walk into them, you are immediately bombarded by the smell, by the noise, by the lack of color on the walls. There is a dearth of life in the eyes of the people who are incarcerated, the people that work in the prisons. There's little grass or trees, very little plant life. This is just what the absence Sad. of life and joy can be. So we went to Germany to understand how you can do things differently. They've taken the structures, the architecture around prisons, and they've modified them and change the people inside them. They run their prisons based in human dignity and organized around the principle of normalization, that prisons should replicate the outside community as much as possible. It's an they apartment! That this job is about relationships and that relational safety is just as important as the security of the building. There's life, you know, people aren't afraid for their safety. We saw young people laying on the courtyard, wow. completely comfortable with each other. You would never see that in an American prison. Because you would think somebody was going to stop you, right? Young people it was hanging the states. out with correctional officers without the fear of surveillance. Young wow. people and correctional officers playing soccer. You walk into someone's room and you can learn so much about them. They've got posters on the wall of their heroes and wow. heroes. And you've got TVs and you've got lighters on the table. You've got TVs! It's very, very different. So you're like... One of the things that was so striking was In tune with the world. And you see trees and water and swans. Yeah, what? it should be a rehabilitation, not a... Yes, punishment also, but not in a sad way, right? And yeah, if you did something really, really, really horrible, yes, you deserve to pay for your, um, you know, what you did. But I don't know how to justify this, but of course, some people are going to find loopholes here and there and say, oh, the way that Germany does it is crazy because how can you, like, a murderer be, like, living the life better than the victims? And blah, blah, blah. I bet they have their system in place, but they know what they're doing. We might not understand, but I feel like maybe this places, this prisons might be for lesser crimes, like, Maybe if it's like murder and all a serial killer, maybe it's different for them. Let me know though. Let me know. But yeah, like let's say if it's robbery, um, a rehabilitation will be better than like a prison prison, right? You know, especially for the youth. Smells like, looks like, and feels like. And this was in a maximum security prison. That's a maximum security. It tells us. You can do this a different way. Our experiment with mass incarceration no, maybe I was wrong. has created a uniquely American phenomenon that has prisons warehousing millions of people far away from their families and communities. It has not worked. It has not made us safer. But we can learn from other countries like Germany where they have systems designed around human dignity mm. that promote restorative justice, that ensure accountability, and everyone is safer, happier, and healthier. And we can restore the promise of American justice. Well, that would be nice to see um, how it will work for America if they do try that. 
if the crime rate is gonna be lower right like the how do you call that you know when you go to jail and then you come back it's a high percentage of people going back again so is that percentage going to lower if they adapt this type of uh prison style i don't know if we'll ever see it in our lifetime but hopefully they try and see if it works better well let's move on to the next one six things you can do in germany but not in the usa which if you guys ever see me at the english garden laying there with no bikini top on please don't say nothing to me because i'm gonna have to then joke go jump off a cliff okay hi everyone what is up my name is Haley. welcome to my youtube channel if you did not know now you do hey you guys what's up welcome to my bedroom <laughs> i've been kicked out of the living room you guys mike is playing his xbox it's his new joy his new shotzi and i've just been put on the back burner so here we are in the bedroom i don't know how i feel about this letting you guys see me on the bed but hey welcome we're family now but yeah in today's video y'all i'm going to be talking about things you can do in germany that you can't do in the united states some of these points i've gone over very briefly in past videos but i wanted to make a little bit more in-depth video regarding these topics and regarding the laws and regulations and rules around these things i would greatly appreciate it if you guys could help me with some of them because there was a lot of gray area for a lot of these things i couldn't find a very definitive yes or no or what was right and what was wrong or what was allowed and what was not allowed so if you know more than me please let me know in the comment section but yeah if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. It is the holiday season, you guys, and it's free, and it's doing something kind, and Santa's watching you to see if you're kind, and if you're not kind, you're gonna get coal for Christmas, so. Hmm, might as well do that. So yeah, the it's first August. thing you guys is going to be the FKK. If you are not a German speaker, you probably don't know what FKK means. I'm going to try my best to say it in German, but I don't know if it's right or not. And I'm pretty sure it's Freie Körperkultur, which means free body culture, Ooh. which basically means the nudity community. I feel like this video is going to get demonetized. So I'm debating if I should say For the sure. N word or not. Imagine Haley coming over to Europe. I will not even just say Germany, I will say Europe, in 2015, not really knowing anything but what I've been taught in the United States, which body, human anatomy, and all that good stuff is a very taboo or vulgar topic, especially when it comes to the nudity aspect of it. Coming yep. over to Germany and spending my first summer here and seeing people without any clothing on was shocking to me. And I, I feel was the same. literally, you guys, probably wanting to- I'll be like, oh my God. Are we allowed to do this? Like for me, I'll be like, where do I look? <laughs> and yeah, I'll be like, oh, are we allowed to do this? Then for a second, I'll remember, oh, we're cute the Philippines. Yes, it's allowed because we are in a holy land here, right? Catholic um, is the pre predominant uh, religion here in the Philippines. So that is a no-no no no only men are allowed to be nude i mean not nude down under but upward you're always topless anyways um but for women you can wear bikini you can wear your swimsuits but don't show the rest of your holy lands right underneath a rock because I could not imagine that people were so open and free and comfortable with just letting it all hang out <laughs> I mean many years have fast forwarded have fast forward since that time like I said that was in 2015 so mm. in 2020 I'm pretty open I might even say that I take part in this F -K -K. my mom that my, sounds my grandma crazy. watching this are probably like <clears throat> oh my gosh no but seriously I'm really okay with going topless with going bottomless going full on Haley out there when it comes I think to summer is vacations fine. if I'm in but full Germany, on, if I'm in Spain if I'm in Italy if it's allowed I usually really don't care and I'm actually comfortable and okay with it which if you guys ever see me at the English garden laying there with no bikini top on please don't say nothing to me because I'm gonna have to then joke go jump off a cliff but if you're going to the United States and you want to take part in FKK <coughs> that's really not going to happen or be allowed in mm. most of the places there I would say like 90% of the United States you're not allowed to go any type of 
non-clothing anywhere but you could get in trouble you could get a fine some people could get like um, registered as sex offenders for something like this oh, so you just yeah. have to be careful the next points are going to be about drinking selfing so if you don't want these points you might as well click away because ugh, i'm going to be talking about drinking a little bit the first one is going to be being able to buy affordable cheap wine in the united states i will not trust you if you tell me that you can buy affordable wine for two to five dollars i will know that your taste buds are whack you have no sense of taste you don't enjoy the finer things in life and you enjoy the taste of robitussin medicine because that's the only thing that comes from two to five dollar <laughs> bottles of wine europe is the wine capital of the world you guys you have italy you have portugal you have france you have spain, spain. You have germany all yep. like at your footstep which means you only a drink, relatively but I don't. high quality affordable <laughs> wine that kind of stuff is not happening in the united states the closest thing you have is california and mm. sometimes california cannot hold a candle to the europe when i came to the supermarkets here for the first time and saw the wine selection and saw things as low as one euro of You're course like, those mm, are usually it's tacky or something but when i saw stuff like two euros five euros for a nice size decent sized bottle of wine i was like wow and sometimes uh, i would if buy you, one just to taste like, it out maybe and see what it was good. like right. and it was relatively tasty it didn't taste like a rotten cotton ball and in germany i can seriously buy something may not be the best tasting or a michelin michelin sterne restaurant wine but it's good you can drink it Man kann das machen, you know? Schmeckt lecker. The next one is going to be drinking on the street, which is something that I need a little bit of help with regarding this because I've talked about it before, but I really don't know the laws behind it. And I'm mostly speaking about Bayern because that's where I've seen all of this stuff happening. But usually you can drink on the street publicly with no repercussions. I have gone out on the S-Bahn, on the streets, on the way to certain events, and I've always seen other people drinking the cops are usually you know standing around if it's a big event if it's a big you know influx of people traveling from one place to another I think here because it's usually fine. when you go to fußballspiele i've been to a few fc bayern games and on the way a lot of people are drinking and the cops not, usually don't like, say anything you cannot i don't know if people care but i don't know the laws about drinking on the streets but i see it a lot but i'm thinking can you go to like the business district here in the Philippines and just, I think you can. It might not be in the law or maybe it's not allowed to do so. I have no context to be honest with you. Uh, when it comes to drinking, I feel like we are a country that is like, do you boo boo, like whatever, right? We are so Catholic, right? So we say, but when it comes to drinking, it's like, yeah get get drunk okay come on do it anywhere you want even in church probably um but i don't know you see you don't necessarily see people like holding a beer in the middle of nowhere drinking no it's more like people drink it outside of like their house like you know the neighborhood they drink together like this neighbor and this neighbor comes together sit in the middle of the street and then they start drinking or maybe the you know the boys of the area they'll just buy a couple of beer and sit at the bus stops we don't call it bus stop here we call it a waiting shed so they, they drink there um, a lot of drinking happens in homes anyways like people like to drink like with family friends so they do that but when it comes to like the streets, it's more of like, oh, we came from a bar and we have some bottles on, in our hand. And whilst waiting for like maybe a cab or whilst walking to the next bar, we would be drinking. So that's what I see normally, but not necessarily like on a Monday at the business district, somebody's walking with a, a bottle of beer. Not that, but it could happen. Like... It's something that you, if it happens, I will not be shocked because I don't think people care. 
<laughs> you. It's just if you're too rowdy, if you're too rough, if you're, you know, cursing, if you're being way too crazy, then they might say something to you. Mm. But like I said, this is a gray area for me where I don't really know what the laws are. I've taken part in this, never got in trouble. I've talked to cops with beers so, in my hand I mean, and like, they don't say same anything. Situation. And they say, feel spaß. The next point is you can drink a small glass of wine or a glass of beer during your lunch break. This might be just a Bayan thing, but I've seen many times people go on their lunch break. You'll see, especially in the city, at some of the restaurants and cafes that serve wine, little spirits and whatnot, you'll see people drinking. They're going back to work later, but no one bats an eye at it. I remember the first time I experienced this, I was out with someone and they were drinking beer and I was like, oh my gosh, are you, is it, like are you off work are you done they're like no i'm going back i'm like you're allowed to drink or maybe it's just even if they don't know lies in the society no that problem. i live in and buy on that beer is like an integral part of people's life and it's considered a food and not an actual alcoholic beverage so maybe that has something to do with it yeah. but like i said it's just something that you cannot do in the united states i've had multiple jobs where i have to like unto i have to sign a contract or my work contract that basically says i'm not allowed to drink from the hours that I'm working, oh, which includes wow, really? my lunch break. It's like a loophole sort of because you're not technically working, but you're not allowed to consume alcohol while you're on the job or when you're on the job or in any way, consumption of alcohol is not allowed when you're working. So yeah, something what if your that you could job is do in Germany that may be wine okay in the United States, but is not as common. The next point is going to be that you can basically take a train anywhere in Germany or all over Europe. And I'm talking about major cities here because comparing public transportation is really unfair. I've, I think I've said this in videos before, but it's very unfair fair because the infra infrastructure, oh my gosh, I can't speak, of the United States is so bad. The car industry is like lobbying against it, so it's never going to happen most likely in the United States. But when comparing traveling from major cities or to and from major cities, oh my gosh, y'all, it is not possible to have an affordable, decent timed, um, clean train I ride this to in any my major too. city in the United States. To put it into perspective, I traveled from Munich to Paris one year, and I think it was 500 miles, it was a little over 500 miles, and it took six to seven hours. I changed once, but other than that, the train went you know, to Paris. My end station was Paris. Oh, now, wow. to compare that to the United States, I traveled somewhere in Florida to Atlanta. And can you guys guess? <laughs> how long it took it was the same distance from munich to paris so you would think it would be six to seven hours no it took a whopping 12 hours and i had to change three times and i had to take a greyhound bus to deliver me to the next station because there was no connection to the train stations that they were that's why they do a lot to. of road it made trips. Made no sense, you guys. And I had to walk. I think it was like one to like two drive. miles in between all of this stuff. When I tell you, it was the most confusing and difficult thing I've ever done in my life, and it cost Just like a four times the amount of money that I would pay in Germany in Europe to travel from one major city to the next, Ugh, it's not possible. It's a lot cheaper and more affordable to A, drive your own car, get an Uber probably, oh, fly, wow. rent a car fly. or anything like that. So I'm yeah, not driving for like 12 hours or like six hours. And trains, especially in Europe, I guess, because we, we have get beautiful there. scenery, but we have that in the United hmm. States as well. But you can't really see it in a train, you know, paying attention, looking out the window. <sighs> I love it so much. Mm -hmm. The next and final point, you guys, which is also a point that I need a little bit of help with because, like I said, this was a very gray area. There were a lot of numbers and information spit out, but nothing really definite. In Germany, you're most likely going to be able to go grocery shopping without completely buying GMO GMOs, GMO foods, is that, would that be considered GE foods? Genetically modified or genetically engineered foods. When looking at the United States, I looked at the Center for Food Safety for the information and the numbers and the percentages that I got. I think they said there was a study or an estimate of 75% of all food in retail shops or like grocery shops in the United States is made out of GMOs or genetically engineered items. Now, a lot of countries 75. in Europe, I'm not specifically talking about Germany, ban GMOs altogether. In Germany, there are some exceptions, but they follow the U EU trade restrictions or laws and regulations, and they are very strict. 
when comparing it to the United States standards. When I read about, you know, why they didn't want them and what the hazard would be, it was not public health. It wasn't, you know, human health or anything like that. Mm. It was about the detrimental adverse effects that it has on the environment. And that I found to be very interesting that that was the reason that they try to ban or try to get rid of or not produce GMOs in such huge amounts. That's all of the information that I found regarding it, you guys. I know there's a bunch. I read so many articles. I read so many scholarly journal excerpts and something and all that good stuff, but it was very information overload for my brain. I think that's it though. I think I've talked a lot, you guys. I don't think I have anything else to say though because it's been very long. So yeah, thank you for watching. If you know anything else that's allowed in Germany that's not allowed in the United States, that's not so stereotypical, you guys. You can let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Happy holiday season. I love you guys and bye-bye. That was nice to know. Um, yeah, I feel like for me, personally, I would really be shocked with the FKK thingy. Because I've never grown around such culture. So it's gonna be like shocking. And I probably will have secondhand embarrassment for the people. Not even for my own self, right? I would just be like, are you alright? Do you need like a blanket or something? You need a towel. Are you like I would be super shy, especially if the person was like talking to me. Yeah, I would be red like my lipstick, right? At that moment. Like Where do I look? Do I still look at your eyes? Like am I free to look everywhere I want to? Because I'm curious. Like I am a freaking observant. I like to watch people, right? And I'm very, very observant. So as a curious eye person, what do you expect me to do in that circumstance, right? Is it okay for my eyes to wander around? Because you are like displaying it. So do I also get to look as I want? Okay, never mind. You know what? Don't answer that question. I'm crazy. If you like this video, don't forget to give this a video a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.